Hey folks, it's UFO Jane from TexasUFOSightings.com and the Weird UFO Show. Pretty good chance you're into UFOs and aliens, so why not subscribe? And while you're at it, turn on notifications. I do go live from time to time, so I recommend that. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I am sick and tired of the Tic Tac UFOs. Frankly, nothing is as cool or will ever be as cool as the flying saucers seen primarily in the 40s and 50s. So for this video, I want to talk about the flying saucers, specifically a case from Germany that's really cool. But before I do that, I think it's necessary to give just a brief UFO history lesson, just a refresher. So believe it or not, it did not all start in 1947 in Roswell. There were actually UFOs seen in the late 1800s by the masses, these large cigar-shaped craft. Then of course we've got the 1947 UFO crash or, you know, weather balloon crash, however you want to put it, and the subsequent flying saucer craze around the same time that we also have the World War II Foo Fighters, so those mystery ball of lights that would follow military planes. Now, as we get into the 70s, the, the UFO shapes kind of start to change. We've got the 1980 Cash Landrum incident here in Texas of a diamond-shaped craft. And then 1997, of course, the famous Phoenix Lights incident. So this is a period where we're seeing lots of triangles, V-shaped formations. And now here we are in 2022, and we're talking about Tic Tac UFOs. While these UFOs are being seen by civilians, we've got the government secretly investigating. So in 1947, you have ATIC, uh, the Air Technical Intelligence Center, fielding UFO reports. They're actually the original organization that really Project Blue Book uh, was derived from, which officially ended in 1969. We now know that in 2007 to 2011, that secret UFO studies actually continued. They've got two UFO offices now, so it very much feels like history is repeating itself. According to a 1952 CIA file about these saucers, since 1947, ATIC had received approximately 1,500 official reports of UFO sightings, plus an enormous volume of letters, phone calls, and press reports. Now, these sentences, I swear, could be lifted right out of this 1952 document and plopped into the 2021 June UFO report that we received from the government. All you got to do is take the CIA document and replace the phrase flying saucers with Tic Tac UFOs or transmedium UFOs or, or what have you, and you've got a, a disclosure movement. And in fact, the CIA was aware that even in 1952, all UFOs were not flying saucers. In another CIA document from the same time frame, the subject of Foo Fighter UFOs come up and the CIA writes, if the term flying saucers had been popular in 1943 to 1945, these subjects would have been so labeled. Flying saucer, Foo Fighter, what's in a name? Okay, okay, so I'm going to get into this flying saucer account, I promise, but context is so key here. Now, I've covered so many flying saucer reports, including here in Texas, um, from the 50s. It seems like everybody was seeing them back in the day. A witness wrote to me about a childhood sighting from May 1954 where they saw 30 flying saucers. They wrote that there was a time in the 50s and early 60s when people set out in their yards to escape the heat. And if you looked up, you could see all kinds of strange things in the sky. There's also another really compelling MUFON case from March 1954 um, in which dozens of flying saucer crafts were seen hovering and moving over a Texas Air Force base. And apparently the Air Force was able to confirm that these UFOs were 100 feet in diameter and 100,000 feet above the ground. I cannot get in touch with that witness to confirm, but we do have a Waco, Texas Tribune article from January 1954, so just a few months prior to this, and we find out that the Air Force was trying to snap a picture of the elusive flying saucers, which it claims didn't exist. Special diffraction grading cameras had been ordered and installed at 60 control towers and 15 air defense sites. These cameras were designed not only to photograph flying saucers, but if any came whizzing by to reveal their chemical composition. Internationally, you can find even more flying saucer accounts. I mean, let's not forget about the famous Guy Hotel memo in which the head of the FBI's field office in D.C. detailed an account of three flying saucers recovered in New Mexico in 1950, and there were bodies inside. The bodies were three feet tall and dressed in metallic cloth of very fine texture. Now, what does the FBI have to say about this today? They apparently didn't look into it, and it probably isn't related to Roswell. <laughs> really? 
<laughs> All right, so the plot thickens. I've got another great flying saucer account to share. The CIA saved a Greek newspaper article from 1952. Flying saucers in East Germany, Berlin, July. Furnished with the sworn testimony of an eyewitness, Oscar Link, a 48-year-old German and former mayor, intelligence officers have begun investigating a most unusual flying saucer story. Link and his 11-year-old daughter, Gabriella, made the following sworn statement last week before a judge. While I was returning to my home with Gabriella, a tire of my motorcycle blew out near the town of Hasselbeck. While we were walking along toward Hasselbeck, Gabriella pointed out something which lay at a distance of about 140 meters away from me. Since it was twilight, I thought she was pointing at a young deer. I left my motorcycle near a tree and walked toward the spot which Gabriella had pointed out. When, however, I reached a spot about 55 meters from the object, I realized that my first impression had been wrong. What I had seen were two men who were now about 40 meters away from me. They seemed to be dressed in some shiny metallic clothing. They were stooped over and were looking at something lying on the ground. I approached until I was only about 10 meters from them. I looked over a small fence and then I noticed a large object whose diameter I estimated to be between 13 and 15 meters. It looked like a huge frying pan. There were two rows of holes on its periphery, about 30 centimeters in circumference. The space between the two rows was about 0.45 meters. On the top of this metal object was a black conical tower about three meters high. At that moment, my daughter, who had remained a short distance behind me, called me. The two men must have heard my daughter's voice because they immediately jumped on the conical tower and disappeared inside. I had previously noted that one of the men had a lamp on the front part of his body which lit up at regular intervals. Now the side of the object on which the holes had been opened began to glitter. Its color seemed green, but later turned to red. At the same time, I began to hear a slight hum. While the brightness and hum increased, the conical tower began to slide down into the center of the object. The whole object then began to rise slowly from the ground and rotate like a top. The object, surrounded by a ring of flames, was now a certain number of feet above the ground. I then noticed that the whole object had risen slowly from the ground. The cylinder on which it was supported had now disappeared within its center and had reappeared on top of the object. The rate of the climb had now become greater. At the same time, my daughter and I heard a whistling sound similar to that heard when a bomb falls. I would have thought both my daughter and I were dreaming if it were not for the following element involved. When the object had disappeared, I went to the place where it had been. I found a circular opening in the ground and it was quite evident that it was freshly dug. It was exactly the same shape as the conical tower. I was then convinced that I was not dreaming. What do you think about all these flying saucer sightings? Was this really just a hysterical moment in history where everybody was hallucinating or misidentifying flying saucers? Or were these accounts real? If they were real, which is what I think, there's only really two conclusions we can make from this. Either A, the government failed to find out the truth about them, or B, they classified, buried, destroyed whatever they found out. So what does this mean for today's disclosure efforts? Did the case of the flying saucers just run cold and now suddenly UFOs are showing up again so we have to reinvestigate? Or did the evidence just get covered up, buried, destroyed? Is the cover-up continuing to today? Let me know what you think about all this in the comments and please if you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe, like this video, turn on notifications. I just want to end with this, you know, I can, I'm a pretty forgiving person and I can forgive people for making mistakes or lying or covering up things, but I'm not gonna forget.